Have another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure. Call me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last. And that drops good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. Special guests tonight, Bing Crosby, yours truly, Toby Reed, Gail Gordon, Hans Conrad, Henry Blair, Meredith Wilson, and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and Bill Goodwin. For America's Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for America's everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. <laughs> As we look in at the Burns home today, we find Gracie in urgent consultation with her next-door neighbor, Dr. Miller, the psychiatrist. You know, it's George I'm worried about, Dr. Miller. He's in the other room right now, so we can talk about him. Well, what seems to be the trouble with George? Well, And if I call you Buttercup, the dandelions would eat you up. <laughs> and change your name to mine. <laughs> Was that your... Yes. Mrs. Burns, I'm only a psychiatrist. That man needs a physician. He's suffering. <laughs> oh, no, no. He was saying. And that's what I'm worried about. And with very good reason. You see, George has a complex about Ben Crosby. He booed because Ben got all the singing jobs he could have had. I see. He feels that Crosby has usurped his rightful glory. And it's true. He's the most popular man in show business today. Ben Crosby. And how did he get there? Over my husband's dead console. <laughs> what do you mean, Gracie? Then of course he's kept George from singing. No wonder he's very popular in show business. <laughs> how did being accomplished this endearing feat? Oh, well, it all started back in 1932 when George and I worked in the picture with him, the big broadcast. Now, George was supposed to sing, but... Someone opened the windows in his dressing room and he caught cold. So, Bing got the song. I see. Now, mind you, I don't say it was Bing who opened those windows, but draw your own conclusion. <laughs> well, Mrs. Burns, Bing Crosby is a very fine and a very intelligent man. Therefore, I think it's safe to assume he did open the window. <laughs> I knew it. That's how he kept George's voice out of picture. In radio, in 1935, the craft program went on the air. They wanted a voice that would sell tea, so George auditioned. <laughs> what happened? Well, Mr. Kraft himself said that George Burns has the creepiest voice in America. <laughs> what? Did he get the program? No. Of he got it. Politics. <laughs> You really believe your husband is good, huh? Oh, to my mind, George Burns is the greatest singer of all time. No, Dr. No, I wish you could fix everyone's mind so they think like me. <laughs> Unfortunately, by my oath as a psychiatrist, I have sworn to do just the opposite. <laughs> However, your husband's complex is a very real condition, and we must help him. Well, how can we do that? By building up his ego. We must flatter him until his faith in himself is restored. And he wants more things every day at his fullest power. And he'll be happy, you'll be happy, and I'll keep my windows closed. <laughs> oh, my, hear him staring around, so we'll try it out now. Well, Gracie, I. Oh, Dr. Miller. Hello, George. Gracie and I were just saying what a beautiful singing voice you have. Really? Well, sit down, Doc. I'll sing you 14 or 15 numbers. <laughs> From time to time, oh, I just remember time. I have a patient waiting for but, me. But, uh, Doc, some yes. other time, George. From oh. time to time. Nobody ever listens to me. Crosby is the one they want to hear. Oh, poor to Crosby. You're twice the singer he is. I know, but he's the one they want to hear. Well, I, <laughs> I can't understand why. All he ever sings is White Christmas. They ever change the color of Christmas he threw. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't get over the way he cut me out of the, out of the picture. In the big broadcast of 1932. And the same thing happened in 1933 when we made college humor with him. He sang the hit song, Learn to Croon. Learn to Croon. If you want to win my heart, desire. <laughs> yeah, they shouldn't have let Crosby mess that song up. <laughs> they should have let you do it. <laughs> All right. And then 
Yes, uh, down the old ox road was in the same picture and didn't grab that one, too. Down the old ox road. Oh, you'll never find out where it is by looking at my ass. Oh, that ox was meant for you. Nobody could go down the old ox road but the old ox himself. <laughs> So was Rob. And it kept up. In 1934, we made wear not dressing, and one of the hit tunes was Love Thy Neighbor. Again, they let Quasi mangle it instead of you. Love Thy Neighbor. Oh, what a voice. You know, I, I've got an idea. Step up and say how do you. Oh, that's a beautiful girl. Then, now, my idea... Gee, but it's good to see you, pal. Oh, lovely. My idea... Oh, trick. My idea... What? No. Oh,
He sounds enough like you to be your brother. Really? Yes. You take over your jobs and your money. That is my brother. <laughs> Else, a beautiful singer. Harry Coleman. No. Shake hands. No. Don't tell me it's a uh, F R A N T. Oh no no no. <laughs> Forgive me for spelling, but I don't want the children to learn that word. How do you know, Gracie? Who's this singer you've groomed to take my place? My husband, the Beverly Hills Nightingale, sugar throat burn. <laughs> I didn't know he could sing. Oh, oh yes, yeah? that, that big handsome brute is a hundred and ten pounds of solid talent. Well, this I must see and hear. Well, get your hat and we'll go see him right now. Good. Oh, Dennis. Yes, sir? Let him fetch my red suede bowler with the green feather, will you? <laughs> Tell your mother I'll be gone for an hour or so. Oh, gee, Pop. He wanted you to play Cowboys and Indians with us. Sorry, laddie boy. This time you'll have to scalp your mother. Come along, Oh, yes, right. yeah, Danny. It's, it's too late to scalp your father. <laughs> melody for richness. Well, that's mighty luscious, Meredith, but uh, what's the number? Patience, my boy, patience, while we add that vigorous tango rhythm. And now we'll combine the melody to complete this blend of tango music at its very best. And friends, just as our favorite tangos are created by expertly blending many orchestral parts, so too with the creation of America's favorite coffee, Maxwell House. The superb quality, the famous good to the last drop flavor of Maxwell House, demands that not just one, but many choice Latin American coffees be included in the final superb Maxwell House blend. With great care and skill, the Maxwell House experts test and select Manizales for mellowness. For richness, they add Medellin. For vigor, they choose other choice coffees. And for fine, full body, they add Bucaramanga. The sum total is the flavor perfection of America's favorite coffee, Maxwell House. A blend so flavorful, so completely satisfying, it's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee at any price. So, friends, enjoy the extra flavor of Maxwell House coffee yourself. You can, for just a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee sold. Ask for Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. George, Bing has agreed to retire and let you take over his career. Really, Bing? Well, I, I have the matter under consideration. Gracie tells me that you bleat a beautiful batch of baritone. <laughs> well, I do have the type of voice that makes women swoon. Oh, don't be so modest. When you sing, the men sing. Now, <laughs> I'll leave you two alone to talk business, huh? Excuse me. Certainly, Gracie. George, now, if you take over my chores, just... What percentage of my weekly stipend would you figure to latch on to? Well, roughly 95%. <laughs> Move that out a little. <laughs> well, we'll see. 
Uh, how do you get paid, Bing? Well, my weekly check is sent to my brother Everett, who deducts 10% of agent fees. He then passes it to brother Larry, who deducts another 10%. What's up? Well, he's my brother Everett's agent. <laughs> now, Larry, he now laterals the check to my brother Barney, who deducts 15%. What? What pays? He's Larry's business manager. <laughs> and Barney then kicks the tattered remnants of the check to the home team, where Dixie makes a nice running over the shoulder catch. <laughs> Removes the fast 40% and cuts up the rest with the four boys. Well, Bing, uh, how do you get your hands on any money? Well, fortunately, my youngest boy isn't too hip on the fight racket. I managed to trip him for an occasional buck by getting him to place a small wager against Joe Lewis. <laughs> what a system. If Joe ever has a bad night, there goes my mad money. <laughs> well, money isn't important to me, Bing. I'll take over your program for free. One thing that worries me, George, now suppose I decided to come out of retirement someday. If you're as good as Gracie says, I'll never get my program back. Yeah, you're right. Tell you what, thing. I won't say my back. I'll hold back. <laughs> hold back, huh? Well, oh, that's mighty decent of you, hold back. By the way, I'm anxious to hear you, Croon. You gonna give me a short touch of some of your mellow stuff? Okay, man. <clears throat> Oh, first the sweetest thing and a few flowers to bring the number winners won't have it passing by. <laughs> well, Bing, don't hold back and fight so much. Did you get all of the tail settled? Tracy, I'm not so sure I should return. What? Well, I just put the Erie on sugar throat here. <laughs> Boy's a little granulator. <laughs> But George was a sensation even back in Boston. This boy wowed them in the old two a day? Oh, ho, the audience has loved him. How they used to bring their lunches and share them with George. Really? <laughs> well, when he started to sing, they'd throw the food on the stage. <laughs> That's right, Bing. You see, Bing, ordinary things like you can handle notes like A and E and G, but just sings notes that aren't even in the scale. <laughs> Makes them up himself, huh? Oh, oh great. Well, it's true, George. According to Paul Weisman, you won Kid and L. <laughs> and L. Yes. Did you hit a high note and Weisman said, that note sounds... I remember. I remember. They <laughs> <laughs> surprised you a little, Gracie, but I hit the same note myself. <laughs> there you go. Ah, you bragging. You know, Gracie, I'm not better than Bing. You're not? <laughs> He's just as good as I am. <laughs> Come in. Hi, Burns. Hello, Hello. Hello. Well, Bay. Oh, hi, Bill Boy. This is Bay. You two seem to know one another. Why, everyone knows this ladies' man. Metro may have its Leo the line, but paramount we have Willie the Wolf. <laughs> well, Bing and I used to live next door to one another. That's right. But Bill moved away. When we had four boys, he saw there was no future. <laughs> oh, Bill, listen, you're an old trusted friend of mine. I should certainly treasure your advice. Yeah? Would you tell me, really tell me the truth, you know, do you think I should retire? Oh, no, Ben, you can't retire. You and I are the number one and number two attractions at Paramount. If you retire, who'll fill the number two spot? <laughs> <laughs> I'll repeat our name in the good one. Now, that reminds me, Ben, if you retire, George will not only replace you on the radio, but in pictures. What? You want George to replace Ben in pictures? Well, why not? He'll look pretty good in there beside Bob Hope. Beside Hope, anybody looks good. <laughs> oh, and George is a wonderful actor, too. You wait right here and I'll go get his press clippings. <laughs> you may go now. <laughs> if you have the receipt broadcast, you can take these things out. <laughs> Do it again. Hey, hope you bring back the right clipping. <laughs> well, I haven't counted on taking over your picture work, Bing, but I guess I can handle it. Uh, what picture are you shooting right now? Uh, Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court. Oh, Bing. Yeah? If anybody replaces you in that picture, it should be me. You feel it? Yes, I'm a natural for that chivalry stuff. You know, women think of me as a knight. They do? Oh, sure. Every time I take a girl home from a date, she says, what a knight. Oh, <laughs> Now, look, believe me, Bing, I, 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 oh, I would be sensational in that King Arthur picture. Now, get this scene. 
boy. Oh, the knights are all sitting at the round table, you see. Yes. Polishing their armor and sipping their Maxwell House coffee. Mm-hmm. Rich, delicious, mellow Maxwell House are wonderfully satisfying. Good to the last drop. The knights are sleuthing up the Maxwell House. Right? <laughs> coffee. Boy. Giving it the sausage treatment. Dude, yes. King Arthur says, Dad, Zoom's going to be with more than ye thousand brands to choose from. More people buy and enjoy ye Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in ye world. Uh, uh, Bill, I, I hate to break ye heart. <laughs> there was no Maxwell House coffee in King Arthur's time. Really, George? What did you fellas drink back in those days? <laughs> Maxwell House is the very best in coffee drinking pleasure. Yet it costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee you can buy. Hey, look, Bill. If anybody replaces Bing in the Connecticut Yankee, it'll be me. Well, okay, George, but that'll be the first time a Connecticut Yank was ever played by a California jerk. <laughs> so long, Bing. So long. Oh, you know, George, my vision of retirement grows dimmer by the moment. But Bing, you... Oh, here comes Gracie. Well, Gracie, what about my flesh clipping? <laughs> oh, I found them. Well? I read them. Well? I burned them. Well, good. <laughs> but they weren't fair to him, Bing. He, he's really a fine actor. He can express tender love in a way that melts the heart. He can express your heart in a way that chills the blood, don't you? Come closer to me. Closer. Oh, how horrible. <laughs> That was tender love. Oh! I'm surprised, yeah. You know, Luella might differ with me, but I don't think this kid is quite ready for pictures. Oh, look. Here comes our friend, Mr. Judson. We'll ask his opinion about you retiring. Who's, who's Judson? Oh, a big oil millionaire from Texas. Mm-hmm. Come in. Howdy, little lady. Howdy, Burns. Hello, Mr. Hello, Judson. Hello, Mr. Judson. Oh, uh, I'd like you to meet our friend, Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby? Say, I'm proud to shake your hand. I admire your singing. I admire your acting. You're a mighty celebrated man. Thank you, sir. And what part of Texas are you from? <laughs> now, I'm not a Texan. Oh, n- now, you must be kidding. A famous man like you just can't be a foreigner. However, <laughs> I hail from the happy little hamlet of Spokane, Washington. Now, where at is that? That's about a thousand miles due north. Oh, doggone, that's hard luck. Just over the Texas border. Oh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Jackson, we'd like your opinion on something. Do you think Bing Crosby should retire? Well, uh, uh, would you like to, Bing? Well, it wouldn't be bad to settle down to a little serious golf. No, no, that, that, that sounds right good. Doctor out here advised me to take up that game for my health, so I went and bought myself three golf clubs. Only three? Which, uh, which clubs did you buy? Lakeside, Hillcrest, and the Hollywood Country Club. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Now, say, if you do retire, Ben, I'd admire to have you visit me on the ranch. Of course, it ain't much as ranches go in Texas. How big a patch of ground you got? Well, I, I don't rightly know. I sent some fellas out to survey it ten years ago, and they ain't done yet. <laughs> Sounds a bit cramped, don't it? <laughs> yeah, but I, I got some real fine horses on it. Say, seems to me like I read you, you stone, some horses yourself. Well, it's always been a moot question. <laughs> I can only say they went by that name. They had four legs. Uh, some of them, <laughs> Yeah. Well, now, I guarantee you'd like these cow ponies of mine. Cow ponies? Yeah, yeah. Well, what a wonderful combination. You can ride them and milk them, too. <laughs> oh, I like your sense of humor. Bing, let's have a decision. Are you going to retire and let me take over your career? Well, George, in all fairness, I haven't heard you sing at your best. You rascal, you held back on me, you know. <laughs> well, I'll give you another sample. Okay. This time, don't thin it out. Now, lay it on to me to full depth. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Pull the trigger on the shotgun of your throat and let the bullet of melody blast Bing right into retirement. <laughs> okay. Well, what do you think? Oh, 
God says it, I'm going right home and get my dog first. You got that fire? No, I'm going to burn the clouds. I got work to do. <laughs> Join us again Thursday when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Bill Goodwin, Meredith Wilson, and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Toby Reed. And now, here are our stars. Gee, I can't believe that Crosby turned me down. I feel awful. Oh, don't you fret, Jennifer. You're still going to take over Bing Crosby's career. If you'd like to back that opinion, so you'll get you fired. Well, Bing, you'll have to retire someday. It may be 50 or 60 years from now, but don't you be waiting. 50 or 60 years? Let's see, that'd play sugar throat well over the century mark. You think you can capture the public's fancy at such a ripe old age? Why not? Al Jolson did it. <laughs> That's right. I forgot about Al. I'll see you in about 50 or 60 years, George. That's the day, Bing. Boom, 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 boom. Don't even go in the room. <laughs> hey, where do you live, Roxanne? I live out in Spokane. And what do you eat, Roxanne? Eat jello. Jello in those six delicious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Delight for every one of them. Rich tasting and fruit like because they're all locked in flavors. Sealed right in by a special process so they can't get out till your first tempting spoonful. And jello is coming back, so ask for Jello, 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 Jello. Thursday, good night, and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one preferred brand of coffee. Always good to the last round. The George Burns and Gracie Allen show is written by Keith Fowler and Paul Henning. And now stay tuned in for Noah Webster says what follows immediately over most of these stations. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.